So in the world of print on demand where creativity meets commerce, navigating the legal landscape is pretty important. I mean, understanding the do's and the don'ts of trademarks and copyrights are not just important, but obviously it's essential for your business's survival and growth. So we're going to dive into why this topic is critical. We're going to go over, I've talked with an attorney and gotten her advice. Of course, this is not legal advice, but I'm going to go over the things that she shared with us. Basically just draw from the vast experience that we've had from the lawyer to my, I have thousands of listings and then mentoring thousands of entrepreneurs in print on demand. I've seen firsthand kind of what the legal issues can be and the impacts on businesses. So the insights I'm about to share, they're just rooted on extensive experience and then deep understanding. So if we haven't met yet, I'm Rachel Rofe, founder of Low Hanging System and Custom Happy. I've created a seven figure print on demand business myself and then helped over a thousand people using my low hanging system. So today I'm going to help guide you through the legal intricacies of print on demand to help you safeguard your business. I've got an ugly PowerPoint thread, so bear with me here, um, but I recently did this as an extra low-hanging system training, so I thought I'd go over some of the things that we went over here as well. So if you are in low-hanging system, that URL, rachelrefay.com slash law thread, if you click on that, it's going to bring you to the thread that we had with the attorney where people were answering questions and asking questions and things like that. Before we get super into this, obviously this is not official legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. I hired someone to answer some questions and even she said she's not, she's a lawyer, but she's not necessarily your lawyer unless you hire her. So this is kind of what I found and then please let it guide you, but maybe not be the gospel. I'll also say what I always say in low hanging system, which is this is not going to be a huge deal for you, trademark and copyright, if you're operating in integrity. So if you're not going and stealing people's listings and constantly copying what other people are saying, then you should be good. Um, I have many, many thousands of listings now on Amazon and Etsy, and sure, we've gotten hit with trademarks and copyrights that we didn't know were, um, were a thing, and most of the time it's like a slap on the wrist, and we clean up. And now I have, you know, I, I do as much cleanup as I possibly can. We have trademark inspector, if you're not using that. It's a tool that integrates with your Etsy listings to double check for trademarks all the time. It's not like a major thing where I've seen other sellers, they're just, you know, using licensing things and stealing people's listings and all that, and then it becomes a problem. So as long as you're operating in integrity, you should be mostly good to go. So first I'm gonna go into kind of what a trademark is and then a little bit of some examples and then some copyright. All of this is based on my understanding. So trademarks are special signs or symbols that businesses use to make their products or services stand out from the others. So they're unique marks that showed who's made a product or who's offering the service. So it could be something like the Apple logo where, you know, the bitten Apple logo, you look at that, you think of Apple, the Starbucks mermaid, the Nike swoosh, stuff like that. You see it, you hear it and you think that's that brand. That's a trademark. So you can identify what's been trademarked by looking at things like trademarkia.com is a tool. There's test2.uspto.gov. You can just pause and screenshot this. Um, and then there's trademarkinspector.com for Etsy. So anytime that you're using something that you didn't create, um, you know, you could be at risk for getting a cease and desist from these print on demand platforms. Now I should say the tools that I've given you they're not going to necessarily capture everything because we do have common law trademarks too. So even if someone hasn't officially registered something, um, if they're the first person to use it, they still have some kind of legal grounds. So that's trademark in its most basic sense. And then I'm going to, in a minute, go over the questions that people ask a lot. So for copyright, I would say copyright is like um, more super original things. It could be a story, a song, a painting, a blog post. Copyright automatically protects that. It protects a creative work, not usually a slogan, so this isn't usually like a low-hanging system kind of thing. Examples of copyrights would be books, movies, music, artwork, TV shows, and website content. To identify what's been copyrighted, same thing here, there's going to be common law, which means that sometimes people will create things, even if they don't officially register it as copyright, they still have rights but you can check copyright.gov to search by title or author. You can't search there for short phrases or quotes. You can also try to Google a saying such as just do it plus copyright and then see what comes up there. Just do it plus licensing. 
Now, what we want to be most focused on is trademarks over copyright. And the trademark question we always want to be asking is, does this cause customer confusion? So does this cause customer confusion so that if you are selling, for example, cookies, and this is taken exactly from Autumn, she's a lawyer's examples. If you are selling something called Michelin cookies, it's probably not going to be confused with Michelin tires, right? So it should be fine. On the other hand, if you start selling Eagles fabric, it could look like this is something from the Eagles football team, and therefore it could cause customer confusion. So people aren't gonna think Michelin selling the cookies, they could think Eagles are selling the fabric. And in that case, Eagles would have a good claim to saying that you are violating their trademark. So things that people can trademark would be things like song quotes. They can trademark song quotes, lyrics from songs, iconic lines on TV shows that could cause customer confusion. If you think, um, you know, I've seen people do quotes from songs and things like that, you could get into some legal problems there. And the thing is now, I feel like with AI, you can create unlimited options constantly with AI. There's really no use in trying to steal other people's stuff or even use it, even if it doesn't feel like stealing. Just because we have so many other options, AI can create countless things so fast. So let's actually go through, I'm gonna go through some questions that people ask a lot inside Low Hanging System and I'll give you the answers as I found them. First people ask, can you use pictures of people on your designs? So first, using a real picture, definitely not, because photographs are typically copyrighted first of all, um, and then it could also just, like there's a thing where rights of an individual have the um, right to control the commercial use of their identity. So it could just violate the right of their publicity as well. In terms of parodies, people ask a lot about cartoon parodies. And the answer here is usually it's protected under fair use. Usually you can do parody. What's really interesting with this one is because we want to be asking all the time, can this cause customer confusion? If you have a parody of someone, you know, the Trump mugs are really popular. If you're making fun of Trump, you're actually better off because it's going to be very unlikely that Trump is selling things that are criticizing himself, right? So that probably wouldn't cause customer confusion, whereas the other way, maybe it could. But um, sometimes, you know, even while the parodies are generally often okay, it can still be kind of a blurry legal line, so it really depends on your risk profile. And another rule of thumb that I like to think of is if a company can spend more time fighting it than you can, I'd probably just stay away um, because especially with AI, as I've said, I mean, you just have so many other opportunities now. In terms of quotes, can you use quotes? We have people ask that all the time. Song lyrics are protected by copyright, um, and then to legally use it, you would need to get permission. They do sometimes have fair use, but again, it comes down to, do you want more people to like fight with you if they have more money to spend? I don't know that I would. Same kind of thing here for a line from a TV show. It's often protected under copyright law because the production company or the writers of the show hold rights to the content. Now you might say, Rachel, I see exceptions all over the place. And absolutely, there are exceptions. Sometimes people don't keep fighting. Sometimes, um, you know, there's all kinds of exceptions, but as far as general law to protect yourself as much as possible, especially if you're in the US, that's, that's kind of the answer. People ask, can you modify, reword, or paraphrase a quote? So no, if you just reword it a little bit, um, like if you just changed one word, it could still cause customer confusion. It could still cause uh, something to be recognizable as coming from a particular movie or song. So it could still be found to be infringing upon someone's trademark rights. It's a gray area. You wanna change things. I know for low hanging systems, sometimes we'll change out phrases and stuff. But again, with AI, you can ask AI to change things so that the same meaning is there uh, without taking someone's exact quote for like the general slogans. In terms of the movie stuff and things like that, I'd probably just leave it alone. My, the lawyer that we hired for this said, I've had cases where my client's business name rhymed with another business name and they got into an argument about trademark infringement. So people can get crazy, as we know from trademark watchdogs and all this stuff too. 
Okay, so should you register a trademark? I would say if you're beginning, probably not. Um, as you scale up, especially on Amazon, it can be really helpful. So when you're ready for that, rachelrofay.com slash brand registry. We have an entire blog post all about registering on Amazon. It should hopefully help you. I would say in general though, the biggest thing is if you have to ask um, if something should be okay, I would probably leave it alone. A lot of these companies just have more money than us to fight and you have endless ideas with AI, so what's the point in tempting fate, really? So hopefully that helps give you a little bit of an idea of what works. I mean, navigating the legalities of print on demand, it might seem daunting, but it's a journey that is worth at least knowing about so that you can keep growing and protect your business. Remember, knowledge is definitely power here, and especially in an industry that's as dynamic as this one. So if you found this video helpful, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share it with others embarking on their print-on-demand journey. See you in the next one.